Uh, I'm Lucas. Next to me is Carol with the B98 Morning Show. So our guest this morning, Dr. Now, it's not Seacrest like Ryan Seacrest. So I'm sure he gets that a lot, but it's Seacrest. And it's kind of like Kareth with Kareth. For years, people that listen to the show have been calling Kareth all kinds of different names. Kareth, Kara, whatever you want to call me, I will answer. Dr. Seacrest, do people call you Seacrest? Crest instead of Seacrest all the time? I think they just say Seacrest, I guess, once they know me a little bit. Once they get to know you? Yep. I love it. Well, thanks for being here today, by the way. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Yeah, I invited invited him in because I was was thinking about, you know, as I I got to know um, Dr. Seacrest, that it's kind of like he's a a wealth of knowledge, and I don't want to embarrass you, but I've been around a lot of doctors. I don't like going to the doctor because when I go to the doctor, I find out that they're going to find something wrong with me. Mm-hmm. And so I try to stay away from doctors and all that. And so that's been my pattern with doctors. But when I met you and I was like, man, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's a, he's I'm agreeing with what he is saying. And a lot of times I don't. And Kareth and I like to self-diagnose ourselves on the air. We come in, there's something wrong with us. And we're like, oh. Yes, I'm always like there was one time I started to get a migraine while we were on air. And, like, my face started to go numb on the left side, and I was like, Lucas, I think I'm stroking out. Like, yes. like if I start talking nonsense, yes. call 911. Right. Of course, it was just a migraine. I survived, obviously. So, I, the reason I'm talking about this is because when I've, hear, I've heard uh, Dr. Seacrest uh, talk, I'm like, man, I agree with all that stuff. So, first of all, welcome to the show, and thanks for coming in. We talked about that. Um, so, I've been to a couple of your seminars and when I'm there, I'm listening to you talk, and I'm like, he's making sense. And I've been to other doctors, I was like, I don't feel like they make sense. So um, let's talk about um, health right off the bat. Um, when you were talking about pellets, and I got into pellets, and I told Kareth about pellets, my wife went and got pellets, I was like, there's something going on with these pellets. Why did you start doing pellets? Well, I've always, yeah, it's all right. it's, I've always known that, you know, health is not just the absence of disease. I mean, there's, you know, most people don't go to the doctors. You're right. They're afraid they're going to find something wrong. And, you know, I've had people come in the office and say, oh, I never go to the doctor. I haven't been to the doctor in 20 years. And their chest swells up and they're yeah. full of pride. And, and then I say, well, you know, do you, you know, ever change oil in your car? And they go, yeah. And I go, well, how often? About 5,000 miles. And I'm like, okay, and do you do that? He goes, all the time. I go, okay, well, in some cases, you know, people treat their cars better than they treat themselves. Mm -hmm. Is that what's happening here? And they're like, yeah, I can see what your point is. Well, sometimes you can go to the doctor and you can find ways to get well, not just to avoid sickness or illness. Yeah. And so when you were talking about um, symptoms, and when you bring up these symptoms, there's people that I'm sure that come to you as a doctor, and you're like, I have this, 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 and this. And you're like, okay, well, what what did your other doctors say? Why are you coming to me? And that kind of thing. So kind kind of go down that path of you know people that are coming in with those kinds of things well yeah i mean so i mean we're we're in a busy society and you know we're we fast paced lives and we're always swinging through the drive through out of convenience and sometimes we don't always eat the best and so what happens is we develop you know we're full of fatigue you know we got headaches and some people have like dry skin and brittle nails and foggy memory and constipation and you know, their energies are super low, and so they look to try and get their energy up. So they're drinking, you know, rescue drinks with, you know, energy drinks and coffees and all kinds of things like that because they just want to feel good. They want to have energy for their family. And they may not realize that there may be some things going on in their body that, quite frankly, are responsible for this. So a better way to treat is is focus on the underlying cause. Don't just treat symptoms. So that's kind of how I like to approach things. Yeah. Okay. So when you people had asked me about the, these pellets, and they're like, well, can you explain the pellets to me? And I was like, I, I just know that my, my hormone, I mean, my, uh, my testosterone was lower than it should have been. And then the reason I wanted to go is I wanted to transformate my body. I wanted to make it uh, more muscular and harder. And as you get older, for some reason, I felt like your your skin gets softer, your body gets softer as you get older. And I wanted to continue that. So that was my main reason for going. But then when I went to one of your seminars and I heard you talk about bone growth and, you know, all the different things that, you know, having a, the right level of, of testosterone helps. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of a lot of disease ailments that people battle. And, you know, we're living in a society where, unfortunately, we're heavier nowadays as a nation than we've ever been before. And so mm-hmm. people are battling weight like crazy, and it's leading to things like blood pressure problems, cholesterol, which in turn, you know, eventually turns probably to diabetes in many cases. And then, of course, the subsequent heart disease and all the problems with that, stroke, et cetera. 
And the underlying issue is not just, you know, go lose some weight. You, I mean, how easy is that? Say, oh, go lose some weight. But the answer is that, you know, some of the underlying hormones in our body, testosterone, vitamin D, thyroid, and ladies' estrogen and progesterone, those those numbers tend to wane with time. I guess as you should say it's part of the aging process. But there's ways to resupport those and re, kind of dial them back and reset them back to the levels that we enjoyed, say, when we're in our 20s. Mm-hmm. And we get all the salient benefits from that. Our energy goes up. Our brain fog clears. We have energy. We have ability to, you know, uh, focus better sleep who has, who doesn't want better sleep these days yeah. right and so as a result you know our energy's up through the day we get results in the gym our libido improves our mental focus improves i mean you just feel like you're younger well in reality you are because your hormones are now back to where you enjoyed them when you were younger and so you feel great yeah i do i do though that kareth and i both have both been on diets like this is the time of year where people have we just come off thanksgiving mm-hmm. we ate a ton Christmas is about to come up. You eat a ton. And then you make something called a New Year's resolution. For the rest of the year, I am going to diet and I'm going to lose weight. That's the number one thing that people want to do in the new year. Yeah. And how many times have you and I been on a diet to where it's like, well, I'm not doing that again. I have been on a diet (laughs) since sixth grade. I really have. And I feel like there's something broken in my brain because I know all the things I should do, but I can't make myself do it you know what i mean like what is the thing that's broken in my brain i haven't yet been able to pinpoint it and fix it well you're not alone i mean people you know diet uh, they just got the extra pounds that they don't want like or need and they're trying to get rid of them so sometimes they'll restrict their calories uh but really I- i'm not a big believer in diets because i just think diets don't work i mean if you think i'm wrong on that just ask anybody who's been on a diet they've been on at least one or more and, you know, just look out there. There's 4,000-plus different diets at any one point in time. To me, that says there's no one good one. So instead of focusing on diets, which, which is what people do, people diet and exercise, but athletes, they have a different mindset. Athletes think differently. Right. Athletes fuel their body and train. Hmm. So if you think of yourself as maybe a calorie-burning machine or a fat-burning machine, which is really what we are, mm-hmm. why not think about, okay, what fuel can I add and then utilize that to lower your, you know, increase your energy expenditure, and then and then you make a lifestyle change. And the thing I like about, you know, one of the things we do is we don't really put people on a diet. Cause I, again, I don't believe they work. Instead, we begin slowly, incrementally coaching them on how they can make small, little, incremental lifestyle changes. And we think addition, not subtraction. So that's kind of how we handle it. Okay, so because we've been on diets before, and you're like, well, this is working. And there's some people that are all vegan, and some people that do um, all meat. What's that meat diet? What's it the called? The low carb the Atkins. Atkins. I, mean, I thought, you know, I tried the Atkins one time. I felt terrible. I mean, literally terrible when I tried. I tried it for like a week, and I never felt worse in my life. I eat nothing but meat, like it said in there. And I yeah. was like, "There's this can't be good, because they're saying you're going to lose weight on this. I, I feel like it was the worst thing I could have done. Yeah, this is the funny part for me with like low carb. I actually feel really good on low carb, and I have migraines, and that's the only thing I've found that actually affects my migraines. But as soon as I eat a carb again, I gain back more weight than I ever lost. It's happened every single time, so that can't be good. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's hard on your system to do all that, and so like the reasons diet don't work is you have to eventually come off the diet. Yeah, and so as soon as you go on one. You might it might work for the short term, but you know why sacrifice a principle for a temporary gain? Mm-hmm. Why not begin incrementally adding? And I, and I get I love this concept of addition, not subtraction. So diets are tend to be subtraction concepts. Yeah. Oh, I got to cut out this. I can't eat any more of that, and I can't have any more you know these drinks. And then at some point you kind of say, okay, I'm done with it, and I want to get back to where I was, and then you regain the weight. And the one guy told me he gained all the weight that he had lost plus interest. Oh, and right. so it's better just to make small incremental changes. So I like to think addition. Hey, what new foods can I add in that are actually good for me? I'm fueling my body. What can I put in? Oh, that tastes really good. What else you got? And then you start adding these new recipes and things that are healthful. And then you feel the energy from the food. And then it's like, well, I like that. I want to start adding that back. And then the old just fades after that. Yeah, so that's what happens. So you think if you think if your body is a car and you want to put in your engine, you want it to last for a long time, you put in the premium gas, not mm-hmm. the cheap gas. It's kind of like putting in you know good food instead of the bad food, right? Right, yeah. And if people are – just think of it. I mean, if you're low on fuel and you pull into the filling station – 
you get out and you have the option. There's your handles in front of you, 91, 89, 87. <laughs> right, or you can yeah. reach back here for diesel if you like, yeah. and that's fine. You know, we all have a food holiday, and it's yeah. no big deal. But eventually, the engine's going to respond to the fuel that you're putting in it. Yeah. So I'll, I, I kind of think that's uh, helpful for us to think about, you know, when you're showing up to the filling station, what am I putting in this time? Now, yeah. This time of year, I can understand people take a little bit of break and all that, but the focus uh, in the new year, there's all the resolutions, but why not start a resolution to say, I'm going to learn to live better. I'm going to learn to be healthier. I'm going to learn to focus on my health, not just avoid disease. Yeah. So what are some of those small incremental steps people can take when you're at the very beginning and you are tired and it, you know, it takes a while for those those food and that mindset to change. How did they just... What's a small incremental step that will just get them working toward that goal before they even feel like they have the energy to get out and exercise? Right. I, would, I mean, start with maybe looking at some video clips on YouTube or something that kind of motivates you. Get your mindset right. And there's motivational clips out there. But ask yourself, you know, what do you want to do? I mean, think about, okay, three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, what what do I want to, what do I actually want to look like? Yeah. Focus on your physical appearance. Not that you're going to worship it or make it your God, but just, you know, this is the only place I got to live currently. It's my temple. How about if I take really good care of it? Some of my patients maybe, you know, treat their body maybe more like a woodshed. And so I try to teach them, hey, it's a temple. Here's where we are right now. This is where you got to live. Let's fuel it with good things. So simple things you can do is, you know, find a motivational step and then find someone that knows what they're doing as it relates to uh, fueling your body with the good foods that you need. And so I would say a step is, you know, get involved in some kind of program. Yeah. You know, I, you know, we actually have a program that I love that helps people start that incremental thing where we teach them how to eat, how to begin to be active, how to think about food. And then these changes start happening in your mind, and then pretty soon you're off and running, and the, the pounds start coming off, your shirts start getting baggy, your clothes yeah. start getting That's loose. That's a great and, feeling, by the way. When you start losing weight and your clothes don't fit anymore, you're like, yes! It's definitely a better feeling than when you pull on your jeans and, and you're like, oh, where'd run. that muffin top come from? Yeah. Yeah. That's not uh, a good feeling. <laughs> we, right. we got to take a break. We'll come back. You've got a couple of amazing stories. I want you to tell a story about Bob. Um, and I want to talk more about um, – also, I was talking about going dairy-free um, because I – in Kareth and her house, they went dairy-free, and her husband lost 20 pounds. Yeah, that's the only mm. thing he did was cut out dairy. Yeah. Mm. So, I do want to talk a little bit about that, too. So when we come back, more with Dr. Seacrest. Lucas and Kareth, who knew they were inspiring teachers? I love your nutty news, and I also – like, you go to a happy place in the morning. Because you're a school teacher, but you're actually getting your lesson plan from our morning show. Exactly. So I'm <laughs> we're teaching teachers how to teach their kids, Kareth. <laughs> Um, just don't use their grammar. <laughs> the B98 Morning Show. 97.9. B- we wonder on 97.9 B98, your Christmas music station. It's now 732. Today, going to be about 52 and sunny. Welcome into the B98 Morning Show. I'm Lucas. Next to me is Kareth. Next to Kareth is Dr. Seacrest, who's basically our Wichita Dr. Oz. Or I don't know if that offends you because my wife used to come home and was like, well, we're doing this because Dr. Oz said it. Hmm. And people look at Dr. Oz like he is like the man. I was like, I don't know if I know everything, if I believe everything Dr. Oz says. But so far, uh, my relationship with Dr. Seacrest has been things that he has told me have been true, so I, I like that, and I trust you. Um, so let's talk about, you know, you said something to me before about doctors, because I told you I don't like going to the doctors, because when I go to the doctors, I feel like the doctors look for something, and then they find something wrong with me, and then they want to prescribe a, a pill to me. And when people are sick, there's a lot of what we like to call, oh, I'm going to put a Band-Aid on that and make sure that that's okay. That's like, that's curing it or fixing it at that pop, at that time of being, but you're talking about Let's find the main root in the healing of that. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm a Western trained physician, like maybe a lot of the people that are listening, and this is our society and this is our system. But what happens is, you know, and so I worked in the emergency department once in a while, as you know. Yeah. And so, you know, conceptually what's happening there is I'm – picture I'm at the, myself at the bottom of a cliff in an ambulance kind of frantically scrambling to catch people as they fall off. You don't come to the emergency room because you're bored. You came – you come because you got something, you have a perceived something that's serious and you need its attention, you need it now. Yeah. And so we have to fix that, and I get that, and that's called fixing and curing. But what is better than that is, you know, what about if we could just put up a guardrail and you never fall off in the first place? What if that were possible? Mm-hmm. See, I believe that it is, and that's more of a functional approach to medicine. Mm-hmm. And and to do that, you can't just stop at healing, uh, sorry, fixing and curing, and that's what Western-trained docs are trained to do. 
you know, we're taught the patient comes in with this illness and you, they have this symptom or this problem. You offer them this fix or this cure or surgery or what have you because they need that at the time. But what if it, if you could search for the cause? See, I, I deal with a lot of chronic illnesses sometimes. Okay. And, and the way that I've lost hope over the last 15 or 20 years, and I've been practicing now, gosh, almost 30 years. Ugh, it doesn't feel like it. But yeah. The, the whole issue is that if you look for the underlying issue, oftentimes you can reduce or eliminate the need for the fix and the cure. So I focus on healing, looking for that under root, underlying root cause, maybe sh- sh- peeling back the layers of the onion and say, why is that person coming in the first place? There's something down there that we can really affect. And then we can reduce, like I said, or eliminate the need for the fixes and the cures in the first place. Kind of like my wife was trying to lose weight for a long time. And she doesn't need to lose weight. Matter of fact, I wish my wife would gain weight. But anyway, that's a whole other story. <laughs> so she wants to lose weight, right? So she'd been trying to lose weight, lose weight, lose weight, and nothing would work. And she changed her diet, and she worked out, and she did all the things that she was supposed to do. Well, um, she came in, and you uh, gave her pellet therapy. But hers was her thyroid. And th- the problem was is that she was never going to lose weight no matter what she did because of her thyroid. Yeah, so if the thyroid's underactive and it's just not optimized, you know, a person's going to start feeling that. So, and then it comes back to this concept of normalization versus optimization. But let's say your thyroid function slowly wanes with time, but your lab test says, you know, you're normal. Well, low, low, as your thyroid starts waning, you have dry skin, brittle nails, foggy memory, constipation, low energy, brain fog, elevated cholesterol, cold intolerance. Even if we are saying, I'm, I'm always cold all the time, have your thyroid checked because chances are it's not working to its full capacity, and so those are some of the symptoms. Yeah. So, so when Nicole came in, she got she had some... Um, so when you do pellets, is that she got thyroid pellets, right, mm-hmm. to help her thyroid? Actually, and thyroid's an oral medication. Oh, it's medication, okay. But it's still... The problem is it's a hormone that's not fully optimized. So yeah. in, in her case... And so that's a... We, we optimized her thyroid, just kind of boosted it a tiny little bit. We didn't make her high thyroid. We just put it back to where it was when she was younger. Yeah. So I, I like to think of that as a functional approach to medicine. Hey, if she has low thyroid, we can throw diet and exercise all day, but the furnace isn't being stoked. The temperature is too low. The thermostat's too low in the house, so you feel a little chilly. Yeah. Push your thyroid back up just a tiny little bit where it belongs, yeah. where it once was, and now you're able to shed calories and burn, and you feel like you have energy. And so the functional approach to medicine says that's the real cause. The cause isn't that she's necessarily eating too much, although we all eat too much. Yeah. The cause is maybe let's tweak that thyroid just a tiny little bit. That's just one example. I love that. Okay, I want to talk about, let's call him Bob. All right, one of your patients. You told me this story, and I mm-hmm. even met this guy. It's inc- This story is incredible, Kareth. you got you got to hear what, what happened. Tell us about what happened with this. So basically, it's, it's one of my neighbors, and you're right. We'll call him Bob. And so what happens is they had an intruder in their house not all that long ago. And so, I mean, it shocked them, and the guy was there, so the police arrived at gunpoint, captured this guy, took him off, and we didn't really know him all that well, but yeah. Kim and I felt, you know, compelled, hey, we need to reach out and minister to these people, because they're hurting. I mean, they're stressed out, and so yeah. we decided to invite him to dinner, and long story short, my wife invited him to dinner three times down to the house, and they turned it down, and I said, Kim, just keep after him, maybe just come down, so... They finally agreed to come down for dessert that night. Yeah. We went on the boat a little bit, came back to the to the dock, and he starts grabbing his chest. And I, I said, Bob, are you, like, short of air? And he was having virtually symptoms of a heart attack in front of me. He didn't know it at the time. He says, it's just my anxiety, but it's never gone up into my neck before. And I've... And I didn't really feel like I'd been short of breath and breaking into a sweat. So I'm thinking, okay, how are we going to get this guy to the hospital? Because he's in just total denial. And, yeah. You know, denial is not just a river yeah. in Egypt. I mean, <laughs> he was not, he was not going to let you tell him that he was having a, a exactly. Heart and so long, short of it, we got him off to the hospital finally. And he, as he arrived into the ambulance bay at the, at the hospital, he collapsed. And so they rushed him in, did his EKG shot him up to the cath lab because he had a 99% blockage of his, one oh of his goodness. arteries. And the cardiologist at the time uh, said he usually tries three times to get the stent in. Otherwise, they rush him to emergency bypass surgery where they cut open your chest and Rip try you to save you. Yeah. 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 And so he something told him that, hey, i got to try a fourth time. He got through. It opened up his artery. He's a, a life saved. And he was obviously so grateful, just so remarkable that all that happened and folded right in front of my very eyes. Yeah. It's almost like it was meant to be that he 
denied those three times coming to your house, we could be there at that exact moment. Isn't that wild? Yeah, I'm so I'm just, I was like, okay, this isn't full. I'm not on duty tonight. I don't want to be doing CPR on my boat. How am I going to get this <laughs> right. guy out of here? Let me get him out of But the, the amazing story about Bob, too, Kareth, is that sometimes in life um, we, uh, you know, smoke or overeat or whatever. We've all been in situations where we're not as healthy as we should be. So I saw a picture of what Bob used to look like because I've seen a, a, what we're going to call Bob now. It is incredible the transformation that he's made in this his complete life. Complete life change. Well, what did you? I mean, what did you help him with? Yeah. So, I mean, and that was an ambulance rescue kind of situation. There was we're at the last ditch effort, and so we did that, and then we went up to see him in the ICU, and they were real grateful, as you might imagine. Yeah. He talked us into going out to dinner, and he says, "You know, you and your wife look kind of healthy. What do you do?" I said, "Well, we just use this transformation program that I do at the office." Yeah. And he goes, okay, when's your next meeting? So he came, and he leaned forward during the whole presentation, says, I'm in. And his wife, who says, ooh, okay, he goes, we're doing this. And so then we started focusing on his underlying issues, helping him make some healthy lifestyle changes, that step-by-step thing we talked about earlier. Yeah. And sure enough, over the course of 12 weeks, he shed 40 pounds and oh 25 goodness. inches. And his wife, who didn't want to do it, also lost 40 pounds and 25 inches in 90 days without going on a diet. Right. That's insane. That does not see to me. That doesn't sound like baby steps. <laughs> like, yeah. I, mean, I guess if you have more to lose, it's, it comes off faster. Mm-hmm. Well, well, it gets better because then you know he started going to the gym with me. Yeah, and he says, uh, "Hey, you know, can I work out with you?" I said, "Sure." And I was going to the gym maybe three or four times a week at that point. He comes in. I said, "Bob, let's do some, a warm up." And and he goes, "Well, okay, let's just do ten push ups." And he tries to do 10 push-ups and he tells me later he goes i could barely do one push-up yeah so we started working through that and later he says you know hey you know i feel like i need more energy so we took a look at his his hormone situation his yeah. testosterone was extremely low so we got that boosted and i'm not kidding you now like three months ago he sent me a picture that is absolutely remarkable he's now doing up to a hundred push-ups a day oh my gosh. yeah he's not spending his whole life in the gym but when he does work out three to four times a week he gets a lot of results and so now we've rolled back the clock yeah. in bob and so now his cholesterol is normal he doesn't need he's on down to one blood pressure pill because that's all he needs so an example of focusing on healing not just fixing and caring i've never Never seen somebody in their 60s with abs like ripped <laughs> abs and before this you would not imagine that this person is the same person you sometimes when you look at pictures before and after pictures like that's a scam there's no way that happened you ever seen those in mm-hmm. magazines but i saw the, it, it's incredible i love that story of perseverance where he couldn't even do one push-up because yeah. sometimes i mean i've been in better shape for sure in my life and now when i go to the gym and i can't run as long as I used to or do as many push-ups as I could before, mm-hmm. you feel like, well, what's even the point? But then you got to trick yourself into thinking, this is where you start. You know, the only way to get to that point I want to be is to do one push-up and yeah. then the next day do two push-ups. Yeah. Yeah. And it gets even better because then it starts affecting the people around you. I mean, his wife, for example, and I'll just call her Leanne, for example, and so she is not somebody that maybe was all that interested up front. She openly admits this. But she says, I got to do this or else my husband will quit. And so she did it for him. But then she ended up doing it for her. Get this. We're doing, we've been doing this now probably eight, nine, ten months. She's lost 82 pounds and 52 some inches. And none of that is height. I mean, it's amazing that, how well she's done. So her whole life, between the two of them, they've lost 140 plus pounds. Oh, my gosh. And, and it keeps going, by the way. So neighbors saw her do it, they're doing this. And so we got another set of neighbors who have in turn lost 140 pounds. So wow. it's a ripple effect. Oh you gosh. get a chance to help other people and make an impact in their lives, too. I love that. I want to talk to you because we have one more segment coming up. I want to talk about vets. We have a lot of people who listen to our radio show that have people in the military. And um, you do something for the vets that is incredible. I want to talk about that next. Here we go. The B98 Morning Show. Give us your name, your work, and the time you Turn the radio on. Shirley. Shirley, what are you doing this morning? I am working. Where do you work? St. Francis. You're already at work? Yeah, 6 o'clock. Look at you. And, you. and as soon as you get to work, you turn B98 on immediately. Yes, I do. Can't everyone be like Shirley? 97.9. B- 97.9 B98, your Christmas music station. Aww. Welcome into the B98 Morning Show. I'm Lucas. Next to me is Kareth. Next to Kareth is our guest today, Dr. Seacrest. Now, he's been in uh, medicine for a long time, and you've, uh, you know, in and out of the ER at Wesley. Matter of fact, we had a, a nurse from Wesley yesterday who listens to the show called in. I said, oh, you know Dr. Seacrest? She's like, I've heard of him, so you got a reputation. <laughs> People know you. You're oh, boy, f- I hope it's good. 
You're famous. <laughs> um, so, uh, anyways, I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing with our listeners your knowledge of what you've uh, accumulated over your lifetime of not just putting a Band-Aid and prescribing pills to people, but finding out what is the main root of why people are coming in and then trying to help them with their health. And you've had a lot of transformations with people. You've helped me. You've helped my wife. Um, you've been talking to Kareth off-air about you know other things, too. So, I mean, I, 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 I feel like... Um, I, I feel like I can trust you, and I don't feel like I can trust a lot of doctors, and I don't know why, because of my life, I've been misdiagnosed by different doctors, and I've had a lot of bad things happen. So um, I appreciate you doing that. But you do something for vets, and we have a, so many people. I mean, this is a this is a military town. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell people about the vets and the PSD and... Yeah, sure. No, and so I'm a veteran, and I'm thankful for uh, all of our veterans, you know, military active as well as uh, prior. I used to be a flight surgeon at McConnell. That's kind of how I got into the area. It was my second tour of duty, and and so I'm so thankful and really have a heart for the vets for all the things they do. And and so one of the challenges that veterans these days are facing is anxiety and depression and, quite frankly, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. You don't have to be a vet to suffer from this, but it's really prominent in that population. And the sad statistic is that, Every single day, 28 vets are taking their own life because they're suffering from an ailment that, that's not being helped very well. And that's a tragedy. These guys and ladies are responsible for our nation's defense. Mm -hmm. They deserve to have the best absolute possible care, and yet they're battling these issues. And so one of the therapies that we have found is extremely helpful in battling these issues, and, and that is the concept of hormone optimization. So primarily through testosterone in the males and then optimizing other things in females, and it's having a remarkable positive effect on these guys getting back out into society and it's focusing on their underlying issue it's not just putting a band-aid on their symptoms i mean you know that's it's kind of the functional medicine approach right you because my wife has anxiety and she had uh got she gets pills to take every night before she goes to bed so she doesn't freak out and she can get some sleep so there's always that but um with with kind of the the hormone therapy stuff you the the vets have they said that that helps them with because you think PSD. That I mean, that's that could be or PSD, PTSD, what, or PTSD. Mm -hmm. That could be like serious. Oh, and, oh yeah. I mean, why else would you take your own life? You just feel like you, you've given up. There's no hope. Yeah. That's it. I've lost it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I'm, I'm going to just take the training that I know and use it on myself. Yeah. So, so there's a great ways around it. Again, the functional medicine approach is if the patient comes in with these kind of symptoms. You know, it's not that they have a Prozac deficiency. It's yeah. just there's something underlying causing these issues. And so you help them. You focus on their cause, a focus on what I call healing, not just fixing and curing. Yeah. And as you deal with that underlying issues, and in this case, if they've had head trauma or blast injuries or concussions and stuff like that, the original problem is up in the pituitary. The pituitary doesn't make its proper amount of hormones. The other uh, parts of the, the other hormone tree doesn't make its parts. And so a lot of these guys have extremely low testosterone levels but have no idea. Yeah. You support that and put it back to where it once was, their symptoms disappear, and now they're able to come off, reduce, or at least sometimes come off their medications, and they're living higher quality of lives. I can see how, I mean, something like this, like people, somebody wants to take their life, it's a, it's a multifaceted issue you got to focus on your mental health your physical health and maybe so the things that they can take care of with the hormone replacement or hormone therapy that will maybe give them the energy to go to, to go to those therapy sessions that they need to or to get back involved with their family and and get back out in society the things that are going to help them mentally um, feel better and feel more connected in their life yeah I, I have to tell you on the pellets I feel like Superman off the pellets, I don't feel like Superman. It, it's literally, it's cut and dry. I don't know how to explain it, but uh, it, I mean, I'm telling you, it works. The other thing, real quick, because I know we're out of time, but I wanted you to talk real quick about because there's a lot of women that um, have hot flashes and all kinds of, of these symptoms, and uh, you've helped women that in this situation. Absolutely. So, again, they're going through the earlier parts of menopause. It, uh, it affects ladies up to 15 years before they actually achieve full menopause. Yeah, talk about that, because a lot of people say, well, I'm not going through menopause till I'm 60, or fit, but it's happened to people in their 30s. Yeah, and so, I mean, the female form of that, obviously, is menopause, and so they'll experience symptoms 15 to 20 years early. They lose up to half of their testosterone levels that are appropriate for them at that gender. 
uh, starting at age 25. And, and men lose 3 to 10% per year. Uh, starting in the mid to late twenties, and that so does they not have. Seem fair. I feel like we just got it, <laughs> and are losing it. That's the way it is. Yeah. And so when these ha- you know, when this kind of thing happens, you, you have these symptoms, and it's not your fault. We don't blame anybody, but we can fix them. And so first is get a diagnosis, find out what your levels are, and then we just go from there. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for coming in today. Uh, I've learned a lot. I, every time I talk to you, I learn a lot. Is there anything else um, that we're missing out on that we want to talk about? Well, um, you know, at some point, have me back, and we'll talk about uh, vitamin D and the challenges of dairy. But very quickly, oh, I've yeah. learned that you know, dairy is really not our friend. We drink it. We're taught to drink it. Yeah, you know, to have strong bones. But the reality is. It actually costs us uh, some calcium, and so we have one of the highest rates of osteoporosis in the world, largely because we're large dairy consumers. And so vitamin D supplementation at the appropriate levels, getting that optimized, will help reverse all that. And we can have that talk again in the future if you okay, like. Okay, yeah. Well, I, I definitely want to have you back on because I, I have more questions for you. Uh, thanks for what you're doing. I, I mean, it, I think it's, a, it's it's helping people in our community um, and vets and everybody. So Great having you here. Great having to be here. Thanks yeah, for having me on. You got it. All right. Dr. Seacrest. We'll we'll have him back uh, sometime soon. The B98 Morning Show. You can call us on your bathroom break. I have been to Stratica and I have sat on their toilet. You've sat on the toilet at Stratica and Hutch? Yes, yes, I have. They really are nice. Uh, That was strange. 97.9 B98.